Hello and welcome to another technical session of Seed Booster or related to financial reporting paper. Today we are going to discuss on the impairment of cash generating unit. Impairment of assets is covered by IS 36 and uh, cash generating unit is an important area of IS 36. To define an cash generating to define a cash generating unit, uh, if we are if the management of an entity is unable to measure the cash flows of a particular asset independent to the independently then the concept of cgu is used using this concept what we do is we uh, take the cgu or the cash generating unit of uh, the asset or uh, cash generating unit of the asset and then we calculate the impairment uh, impairment of cgu as a whole then we after calculating the impairment or after calculating the impairment loss we allocate that impairment loss to the, the all the assets belonging to the cgu using the rules defined by is 36 okay so as per is 36 the general rule for the allocation of impairment is so rule for the allocation of impairment is firstly we allocate the impairment to specifically impaired asset if any asset is uh, is specifically obsolete then we will use the we will allocate the impairment first to those assets after that we allocate the impairment to goodwill so firstly specifically impaired asset then second to goodwill then third one to the other assets other assets on proportionate pro rata to carrying value right so on the basis of the uh, carrying amount we allocate the remaining impairment on the other assets so uh, this is the rule of impairment and while doing this we must be careful that no asset is no asset is carried carried below its recoverable amount so while allocating the impairment we must be careful that if some assets are already carried at its recoverable amount then we need to ensure that such assets are not again charged with the impairment loss so this is the rule of impairment now after this let's go through a question the net assets of angle of cash centric unit are pp 200,000 allocated goodwill 50,000 product or patent 20,000 intangible asset is also given non -cur net current asset which is carried at net realizable value that is 30,000 total 300,000 the total carrying amount of the CGV is 300,000 and as a result of adverse publicity Fangal has a recoverable amount only dollar 200,000 so we are provided with the carrying amount and we are also provided with the recoverable amount of 200,000 so we need to calculate the value of Fengal's property plant and equipment after the allocation of the impairment loss so we need to calculate the value of this asset so let's uh, calculate the impairment of CGU first impairment loss of CGU. So to calculate the impairment loss, we must compare the carrying amount with the recoverable amount. So carrying amount and a recoverable amount. So carrying amount is 300,000. Recoverable amount is 200,000. So if the carrying amount is higher than the recoverable amount then the, it will result in impairment loss so impairment loss of 100,000 has occurred here so after the calculation of impairment after the calculation of impairment we can allocate the this impairment with to the assets so let's compute the allocation part allocation of 
impairment loss. So for the allocation purpose, we let's list out the given asset first. PP, then goodwill, goodwill, then patent, patent, then net current assets. Net current asset, which are already carried at its re, uh, recoverable amount. So the value of asset before impairment is dollar three hundred thousand fifty twenty thirty fifty thousand twenty thousand and thirty thousand. So in total. This is 200, 200. So in total, it is 300,000 carrying amount. So this is the carrying amount before impairment loss. Carrying amount, this is original. Now let's start the impairment loss here. impairment loss impairment loss is already it is 100,000 we have calculated in total for CGU now as for the allocation rules firstly we need to allocate the impairment to specifically impaired asset as there are no specifically impaired asset in this case the question has not stated that any particular asset is not in a working condition or it has become obsolete so we are not able to use the first rule because of the lack of information. So let's move to the second rule is uh, the impairment should be allocated to goodwill. So goodwill is here. So to goodwill we are allocating 50,000 as a whole. New carrying amount. So this will be nil now. So now to other assets, remaining assets are PPE, patent, PP and net current assets are remaining here so to other assets we need to allocate the impairment on pro rata basis of carrying amount okay on the proportionate of carrying amount we need to calculate the impairment loss so but there is a, a exception there the exception is no asset should be carried at its recoverable amount. since the question states that this asset these assets are already carried its net realizable value so we cannot again charge this impairment to reduce below net realizable value which is the recoverable amount of those assets so in this case we will not be allocating any impairment for this particular these particular assets so these assets carrying amount will be 30,000 itself now there are two assets remaining and after allocating these impair this impairment uh, uh, the remaining impairment loss is 50,000 this minus this is 50,000 impairment is remaining so we will be charging this remaining impairment of 50,000 to PPE and patent. So th the remaining impairment is 50,000 and this will be charged to these assets in proportionate basis that is 220, that means 220,000 is total. So 200,000 divided by 220,000. So if I calculate this 50,000 into 200,000 divided by 220,000 then it is 45 I'm writing it here 45 45 45 it is impairment loss now in case of patent as well, in case of patent as well, I am doing the same thing. Fifty thousand into twenty thousand divided by two hundred twenty thousand. So that will be four five four five four five four five. So this is the impairment loss for patent and forty five thousand four hundred fifty four is impairment loss for PPE. So if I deduct these two uh, from the original carrying amount and I can calculate the new carrying amount 
200,000 less 45454 is the new carrying amount of the PP and for patent 20,000 less 4545 is 15,455. So if we add all these two, it should result in. So let's make it uh, around it and let's make it five years. Oh, five, five so that it will be five. Oh, five. Okay, so fifteen four five five plus thirty thousand is already there plus one five four five four five. 200,000. So, this is the, this was the recoverable amount given by question. So, firstly, what we did, we calculated the impairment loss of CGU, then we have allocated this impairment loss to the, all the assets using the impairment rule prescribed by IES 36. So, our re requirement was to calculate the carrying amount of PP. So, we have calculated the carrying amount of PP is 154. 545 after deducting impairment losses. So this is one of the popular question asked in examination. So student must be well versed with this style of question uh, as a preparation for the examination of financial reporting. So I'll be back with another technical content in another session of State Boosters. Thank you.